Oh my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the thing to go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the National Bowling Stadium for continuing coverage of the PWBA Tour Championship for the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. My name is Emil Williams, Jr. And fresh off a well-earned break, uh, Aaron Smith has joined us for round number two today. Uh, Aaron, obviously, I hope all is well. You look refreshed and good. And uh, I certainly hope you're feeling well because uh, eight games this morning is any indication of what we are in for this afternoon. Uh, then it should be very fun. Uh, I don't think we'll see what we saw earlier, and that means that uh, you know Stephanie Zavala was not a typo. If you're looking at the standings uh, earlier today, she did unfortunately shoot 96, uh, but rebounded very well, 96 in the opening game, uh, but rebounded extremely well. Uh, in fact, rebounded so far to get to uh, plus 180, or excuse me, 159 for 16th place. Uh, which is still a very good spot considering how many games we have left. Diana Zavialova, who has been very good and more, very consistent throughout the majors, we talked about that this week. Uh, she is your round one leader, followed by Liz Johnson, Missy Parkin, who made the show last night at the Pepsi Classic, uh, as Shannon Sellens. Of course, we always talk about her, non-member. Every time she's out, though, she's a contender, and she certainly is here for the Tour Championship. And Stephanie Johnson, who has had a very great week so far, mm -hmm. uh, she is in fifth place. Uh, I know you didn't obviously watch a lot of bowling this morning, Aaron, but you looked at some scores. You looked at some standing sheets. Uh, where are you? Like, what are you expecting to see just based on uh, some of the scores and the standings that you have seen and taken a look at so far? You missed a great opportunity to pull out the where are you, Aaron. You're right. Right there. So, uh, I mean, I think my big takeaway is obviously Diana bowling well once again. And this is the type of event she just performs so well at. And if you look at back at her record at the uh, Hall of Fame Classic, at the Kickoff Classic Series in January, and then the Bowl TV Classic, great tournament name, by the way, uh, at the Summer Classic Series, this format, this, this thing that's going on right here, she was so close to making both of those shows. She pulled incredibly well, so I'm not surprised to see her in that position once again. But the big thing for me, the big takeaway, is looking at kind of the big picture of Player of the Year and everything going on with that. And our top three players are in the bottom four spots. Uh, so for Verity Crawley, Dasha Kovalova, and Julia Bond, uh, how do they respond after a uh, not-so-great opening round? Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting situation that has developed. We thought last night was wild, of course, with Julia winning uh, and then making that difference of 355 points amongst the top three uh, players. Now, uh, as Aaron mentioned, they are at the bottom uh, of the leaderboard at the moment. Um, and then there's some situations where, you know, someone like Missy Parkin could make a, uh, a, a very big run here uh, throughout this event. And if she makes the show and potentially wins, uh, then maybe she could win it. So there's there's all types of intrigue uh, that player of the year race. I mean, every single basically at this point, every game, it changes literally every game. Um, and you know, we'll run down those points again. They are updated for us through. Uh, this round, so we're looking forward to that. We'll take you out on the lanes. Uh, we'll start you with the leader, of course, Diana Zavialova, taking on good friend Verity Crawley and Kelly Kulik and Maria Jose Rodriguez.
I will say, Emil, taking a look at uh, across the scoreboards here at the National Bowling Stadium, a uh, much better start for Stephanie Zavala. Three for three in her matchup against Louise Cole. You know, she, she rebounded uh, very well in game two uh, this morning. Uh, she had the front eight after shooting 96. So uh, we, we knew, certainly expected her to rebound. Uh, but uh, that was obviously the that intrigue of, okay, you know, where is she? Is she is she going to be able to rebound? Obviously, was it just that, you know, was that pair kind of weird? Uh, the JT really kind of laid out what this pattern has presented. Uh, a very different ratio than the players are used to seeing. So they've had to do uh, some different things from a from a strategy, perhaps mindset situation. But uh, overall, it's not a difficult or certainly at the extreme levels of difficulty uh, overall that in the, from a pattern perspective. And just taking a look, uh, look from our location here behind lanes, uh, 45, 46, 47, 48. I see Sandra Gangora starting with Urethane, and I know she had a, a strong opening block uh, sitting in, uh, I believe, the top 10 when it was all said and done. And I think she gave up, gave away a few spots at the end, but uh, started off with three in a row before a spare opportunity in the fourth. So I'm not sure how much of that was uh, going down the lane in the first round, but... Uh, as a, as a whole, I'm not sure, but Sandra did use your thing. She threw a purple hammer up the boards outside. So that was certainly something I was looking forward to seeing if she would continue that. I don't see why she would. She got off to a great start. She was in the lead for the first couple of games, uh, was in second for a while also. Oh, nicely done. Got the Oliva. Out and about making four nines already. So for a while it was Gongora, then it was Yalava, uh, and then those individuals stayed one, two for a few games, and then we started to have a little mix up between uh, spots two, three, four, five. Shannon Sellens was second uh, at one point. Um, I think Liz Johnson was second before settling back into second at the end of it. Um, and then obviously, as you mentioned, Sandra Gongora. I dropped a few spots, tailing off at the end with that 185, 192. But she can get off to the great start. We talked to uh, DZ uh, at the end of today's block, and she talked about uh, kind of referring to her notes, maybe on what she missed, what she could have done differently uh, at the end of a block, and obviously on specific pairs. Uh, that was a good question from JT regarding you know, what, how she can maybe eliminate uh, some of the, the, the things that inhabited her or inhibited her uh, to continue the, the tour pace she was on at the end of the block. So, you know, we did notice that players were able to get left or move further left as the block continued on. But we'll see how it all shapes out here. I would like to know, uh, maybe I'll take a peek where Stephanie Zavala elected to play during this opening game. She was further right in game one, but a lot of players were. And the contrast at the time was we had Stephanie Johnson on, uh, on the pair to the left. And Steph was left or further left than Stephanie Zavala was, which you don't see all that often. So I couldn't really tell. Okay, was it? So where Steph, Stephanie was playing, on the, you know, obviously just Steph to say, all right, Steph, I'm going to play here because this is where I think I have the best look at the moment. Game one was a little tricky for some and, you know, not for others. From 40 feet, 26.05 mils. Combo of Tegel current and terrain.
in a lot of I'm the best situations. I don't know what I did to earn such praise. But I appreciate it. Well, it's true. The only thing I did differently today was open up the shelf. I've been holding this down this whole time. <laughs> Good afternoon, though, to everybody. And Cass, Paula, William, Tone Loke, Cedric, Sid Rowe. Okay, so KTY, that's got to be Katie. Right? I think. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I okay. think that's a safe assumption. All right. Rick, Paul, Ken, Gloria. I feel that we asked Evan, or at least what we assumed, Evan. We wanted to get a correct pronunciation. I don't remember the answer, but I feel like we asked that question. I believe we did. So Evan, if you could just we, let us know. We might need an assist once again. On the correct pronunciation of your first name because we want to make sure we are pronouncing it correctly. What's up, Sebi? James is in. John, yes, every every block is on the fresh. We got to give our guy Bill Walter something to do here. Bill representing Kaggle. Judy is here. Kendall is here. Larry Bird. Larry, you should just walk around with your index finger pointed in the air. From way downtown. From way downtown, indeed. For folks who ask me about Indiana, since I'm from Indiana, and not a lot of not a lot of cool things happen in Indiana for the most part. So I, I've tried to pass off that Larry Bird and Mike Aldi are on the are on the currency there. Nobody ever leaves me. Mike Aldi, <laughs> Larry Bird. Shannon O'Keefe off to a real nice start over on 69 and 70 against Julia Bond in position to capture that matchup. Saki Mukutani also putting together a big game in a uh, fiercely contested match against Dasha Kovalova right now. Kovalova can still get to 257 this game, and uh, that might not be enough. Saki, 269 max score. Brianna Cote, 279, Max, her matchup against Liz Johnson. Once again, in addition to having every pair in play available to watch, we do have live scoring as well. I do feel, I, I saw a comment in the chat asking about Verity if she's throwing urethane, and uh, that does look very urethane-esque going, going down the lane, so. Maria with the double. It's gonna build a little bit of a lead here. In a rematch of the 2014 Queen's title tilt, also held here at the NBS. So 
Kelly responds nicely though. Seventh frame. As we get toward the back half of game number one, just a reminder, uh, Emil already rocked out some hellos to the crowd and on Bowl TV, but a big hello to the good folks watching on Facebook and YouTube as well on the Sport of Bowling USBC page, the PWBA Tour page on Facebook, and uh, the Bowl TV YouTube channel as well. As a uh, programming note, we will be signing off after game one on those platforms. So BowlTV.com, the place to be to watch the rest of the block today. And then, of course, the final round of match play tomorrow to determine the top five leading into the stepladder finals taking place on Sunday, Halloween. 5 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Network for the final major of the year, the season ending event, potentially the event to, or the, we, we probably will not have player of the year determined at that point either. It could happen on the show. And of course, on top of it all, just, just hanging out there on the side, no biggie. $50,000 top prize. Dave Ryan and potentially Kelly Kulik on the call. Kelly wants to be bowling for $50,000. Uh, but if she uh, does not make the top five, she will uh, stick around and join us for the show. So BowlTV.com, the place to be to pick up that subscription. Not only do we have the great Bowl TV community, we have giveaways as well, Emil. What was, what was the giveaway last round? Uh, we gave away a Brunswick Quantum Eva. Oh, oh how about that? That's, that's kind of cool. Sh should we do that again? Uh, no. Okay. But just because we have a different bowling ball. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at that. So that's right, folks, from our gold industry partners, uh, so Neil mentioned the uh, runs with Quantum Evo given out last round. Uh, in the next two rounds here on Bull TV, we'll have a Roto Grip bowling ball of choice and a Storm bowling ball of choice. I don't know if that's going to be the order or not. We'll have to think about that. We'll have to have a conversation. But uh, we will be giving those out uh, one per round coming up here toward probably the end of the block. Uh, so, BowlTV.com. Not only can you uh, watch the best athletes on the PWBA Tour, get to experience hundreds of hours of, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of hours of content, but uh, be a part of a great community, but you can win as well. So, a lot to love about being part of the Bowl TV community. But uh, I do have to pick up that subscription to continue after this. Eight ninety five for the event ticket to watch the rest of today and tomorrow as well. Nine ninety five, a dollar more gets you the, a monthly recurring subscription, which is which does give you access to the entire site. So not only the live event coverage, but the uh, archived events. So if you missed any of the PWBA tour season so far this year, you can check it out there. Trouble for Verity there in tenth, four seven ten. And of course, all the on-demand content as well. And then $79.95 for an annual recurring subscription, the best way to support the PWBA tour. Transaction fees do apply for all three. So BullTV.com, the place to be. Pick up your subscription. Sit back, enjoy, and watch the best in the world. I can uh, confirm, Aaron, the facts regarding which brand of bowling ball will be given away this round. I saw the list, and it is Roto Grip for round two. Roto Grip for round two. Now, of All course, right. you can change it and do whatever you want. That's true. We're rebel. You, yes, rebel without situation. without a cost. <laughs> I just like to mix things up. That's all. All right. Oh, okay. How about that? We got some big score updates coming in here as we yeah. uh, as we get ready for this final frame. Two sixteen for Crawley. To finish up, so Zavialova will have the opportunity to mark now in the tenth to uh, sneak away a victory from her very, very, very good friend and uh, look to continue her spot at the top of the leaderboard. But some other scores rolling in 
Brianna Cote, 258 to 200 victory over Liz Johnson. Dasha Kovalova, 255 to 225, winner over Saki Mukutani. Shalinzel Keefley with 204 will get a win over Jen Higgins. Liz Culkin, 237 in a victory over Stephanie Zavala. Pretty close match between Birgit and Stephanie Johnson coming down to the 10th frame. Stephanie will have the opportunity to win that one, but uh, Birgit is going to force her to double. We see Parkin 197 to 191 over Winston Boomershine. Shannon Sellens is going to get a win with 206 over Ashley Galante. Shannon O'Keefe is going to be in the 230s in a victory over Julia Bond. Daria Paiu 231 to 185 over Shannon Pukowski. And then Sandra Gangora is on her way to a victory over Valerie Versier. She's got mark number one. She added the second for good measure. She's going to get into the 230s and record a victory here in game one. Maria is on her way to a win as well against Kelly. Best Kelly can get to is 173. 226 still out there. For Maria. Good question in the Bull TV chat from, from Highwayman. Can daily subscribers win the drawing too? Yes. If, uh, if you're watching on BullTV.com and uh, you see the prompt when it comes up and you should be good to go. So once again, that's a little bit later in the block, but uh, yes. Event ticket, monthly, annual, it's all good. As long as you're watching Bull TV, we'll have the opportunity to participate. We can't see it, but if you've been watching the uh, Gongora uh, Bersier match, Valerie Bersier left some similar leaves that Stephanie Zavala left on the fresh. Uh, the difference was she left enough makeable spares uh, in, in, in comparison to Stephanie. Stephanie was just a couple washouts to start, and then I think it was like six splits. But four through the middle, uh, you know, face splits, different varying items like that. It's easy to do on the press. It's been a lot of pocket seven tips today, too. Hmm. Well, that's not good at all. So one too many of those yesterday. Indeed. Maria unable to convert, but it's done enough for the bonus pin. So 194 to 173 to take the win against Kelly Kulik. And folks, that will uh, conclude game one. So here on BullTV.com, we're going to take a quick, uh, quick break as we get ready for game two. Once again, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, this will be the end of our uh, streaming to those platforms. But head on over to BullTV.com, pick up a subscription check out the action for the rest of the day here from the National Bowling Stadium. So folks, we'll be right back here on Bowl TV. Continue coverage of the PWBA Tour Championship from Reno coming up next.